Okay, everybody, we're going to show you guys how to do multicam here. And here I've got one example of a multicam shoot that where there are actually kind of two different types of multicam that is usually done with music videos. One is, uh, for, first of all, this is a this is a live performance. These guys were actually performing the music live. So we were able to have five cameras there videotaping one performance at one time. And kind of the other way of doing a multicam video, a multicam music video, is essentially you'll have a pre-performed music file that's already been recorded recorded professionally, maybe it's on their CD or something like that, but they basically take that and the group lip syncs to it and performs to that music. So that way you can shoot a single camera, you can shoot their, them performing once, then twice, then three times, and you shoot it like maybe six, seven times and you have seven different angles to work with. And every time it times out perfectly because they are performing to the right, to the same song, the exact same digital song. But this one they actually performed, we recorded the mix while they were performing, and we set up five cameras and recorded that performance basically four times so we got it right, but essentially you think of it as we record it pretty much one time to get that performance with five cameras rolling at the same time. What I recommend doing is before you do this, this is shot. these are shot on 5Ds and 7Ds and the compression ratio on these things run about like 40, 40 to 50 megabits per second depending on the camera, which when you play back those files, which when you play back those files, especially something like five streams at a time at 50 megabits, 40 megabits per second, a lot of computers aren't going to be able to keep up with that and the system will start lagging and will just start playing like every 15th to 30th frame. So a lot of systems aren't fast enough to keep up with that many cameras. So what we're going to do first of all is we're going to compress these. Basically the process is you compress these so they're running about 10 megabits per second and then you edit with the 10 megabit per second files and then once you are finished with the edit you will reconnect all the files to the high quality files and you just basically encode them. This is called proxy editing or offline editing where you're editing at a lower quality then you're going intending to eventually reattach them to the high quality files. So first of all what we've done is I've opened up media encoder here and we are going to encode all these files to a lesser quality. I'm going to grab all these files, I'm going to drag them into Media Encoder. Once they're in Media Encoder, first of all I'm going to switch the location. I've created a new folder for these. I've highlighted all those files in here that I'm going to re-encode. You click on one of these output names right here and it'll ask where do you want to save the new files. I'm going to go to my desktop. I've got um, a new folder under Music Video. I've got Compressed Folder all ready to go. I'm going to select Folder and now all these locations here it's going to encode those files to this, to this new folder. But now I'm going to change the compression type so this is a lower quality here. I'm going to hit on one of these Match Source presets here. It'll say you're going to do this to many files which is okay. I'm going to hit OK and it brings it up and things you want to make sure that your source files are pretty much matched. This is usually done automatically in, in Media Encoder but uh, right now you want to make sure your resolution is matched. You could do lesser resolution but there's no need to. The same frame rate, same style, progressive scan and square pixel aspect ratios, all of these are checkmarked. They're, they're matching the same. The only thing that we really need to change is the quality and already this is set at about 10 megabytes per second. You can take that down a little bit more if you want. If you're doing more streams you can take it down to 6 or 7. Uh, but right now with 5 streams and this uh, PC that I'm working on that has a decent video card should be able to keep up with this just fine. So I'm going to do 10 megabits. Just to change this, just to show that you can change it, I'll do it in 9 megabits. Down here it shows you the estimated new file size, uh, 325 megabytes. It's going to be around 325 megabytes. Let's look at what the original file comes in at. And actually we can see that right down here in the properties. That's 2 gigabytes. So this is going to cut the quality down by about one quarter. And, it, and the system can play back one of these just fine. So playing back 5 of the lower quality files will be about the same data through put for the computer as about five of these so it's going to work out just fine. So once I've got that set, I turned it down to 9, we can turn it down to 8 if you want to, get a little bit smaller, let's see how that does. But that, that's starting to kind of push it a little bit. So I'm just going to make this a, a, if you want to do it really fast, to get it done really fast, put this on constant bitrate and it will do it really fast. If you want it to look a little bit better on those proxy files, which is helpful sometimes if there's a lot of movement, you will likely want to do a variable bitrate so one pass or to get even better looking files, variable bitrate two pass, but it will just take longer to encode those files. You hit OK. And it has changed those to a custom preset there, and I'm not sure why, but this changed back to my previous folder. So I'm going to put that back into my compressed folder, make sure that these are all going to the same folder, and all those settings are done. So now I'm going to hit play and let these encode. Then I will come back and we'll take a look at the next step.
Okay, now that these are finished, I'm going to close this, close media encoder. I'm gonna to go to the compressed folder here. I wanna show you the difference between the compressed folder. Let's look at the original. I'm gonna right click and go to properties and look at this. This is almost uh, nine gigabytes here, eight, eight and a half gigabytes. And now the compressed folder with all the same files in it is 1.4, so a lot smaller. We've lost we've lost several gig there and it's much smaller. These are much smaller files. These are going to be able to edit nicely and quickly inside of Premiere, whereas these ones, if you're playing five streams at once, it's gonna be kind of difficult. So I'm gonna go into the the compressed folder here. Actually, one thing I want to mention here, uh, when it comes to reattaching files, if the extension MOV is different than it is here in the compressed, it's a little, it's kind of another step to add in Premiere to, to reconnect them to MP4s. You kind of have to do it one at a time. If these are the same extension, if the extensions match, you can just do it all in one, in, in just basically one move. We'll show you that coming up here. But I'm going, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the extension on each one of these. QuickTime movies basically play back H.264 as well. So we're just putting a different, what's called a different wrapper or different extension on it. So I'm going to enter and yes I want to change all these extensions here to MOV. It'll make it that much easier when I reattach these. So they're ex the names are the same, the time codes are the same, everything else is the same except for the extension. And the reason why I didn't originally encode these to QuickTime videos inside of Media Encoder is because the QuickTime settings have not been updated in that. QuickTime settings, the compression is not as good as the more recent H.264. If you use the same compression data rate for the, and do it to a QuickTime movie, the quality is going to suffer. It's going to look really, really bad and it's going to be difficult to edit it with that quality. It'll be difficult to tell which files are in focus or which one's not just because the, the quality is going to be too compressed. But these ones will look pretty good because these are the new H.264, but now I've wrapped them in a in a QuickTime extension. And if you don't have, if you're working on a PC, you'll need Quick you'll need QuickTime installed for it to use QuickTime files inside of Premiere. Once QuickTime is installed, is installed, you can open it, open up QuickTime movies in Premiere, and they'll work just fine. So now within Premiere, I'm going to import my files out of the compressed folder. So now out of Premiere, I'm in Premiere, I'm going to import the compressed files into Premiere to edit. These are the more compressed QuickTime files. Very low data rate, around 8 megabits per second, where the original files are likely around like 40 to 50 megabits per second. So these ones are significantly smaller here. I'm also going to bring in the music file that we're going to use for this. This is the mix music file that was recorded on set. Uh, I'm going to create a timeline. I'm going to grab one of these uh, camera angles and drag and drop it into my timeline. And once I create a timeline, I'm going to delete that file out of it. So now I've got my timeline generated. I'm going to rename my timeline music video. Now that we're going to start multicamming these clips here, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to want to get these synced up on the exact same frame so they all match up. So what we're going to do is I'm going to load my first camera here in the viewer. I'm not sure how that marker got there. I'm going to clear that marker. And now I'm going to skim through the footage here and I'm going to find the moment where the slate, we slated every single one of these cameras so I'm going to get it on the exact same moment in every one of these shots here, right where the slate hits to match it right there and I'm going to put a marker. I'm not going to put an endpoint. I'm going to put a marker. Marker makes this a lot easier in multicamming and I will show you why. You can do endpoints but it will cut off the pre-roll. I just say put a marker. It makes it much easier. I've got a marker there. Go to the next one and do the same thing. Find the point where that hits right there. Put M for marker and I'm going to do this to the rest of these clips so I've got the marker on the exact same sync marker and then we'll come to the next step. I've got each one of these marked now right at the point where the slate hits. So each one of these has a marker right when the marker claps together. I have a marker point on each one of those. So now the next part is to select all these camera angles. Now that they've all, we've, we've got them all lined up with the markers, right click and we're going to create a multi-camera source sequence. This window will pop up and it'll ask you what do you want, what do you want to name the clip. And just I'll just say multi camera take four. This is our take four, so I'm going to call it multi camera take four. And I'm going to make these line up now. If you have a time code jammer that goes into individual cameras, you can tell it to sync by time code. You can tell it if the time code is jammed to every one of those cameras, it's going to sync this by time code, and it's going to be really super easy. Otherwise, you can do a visual endpoint if you wish, or you can do a visual outpoint if there happens to be a slate, a tail slate at the end, uh, because it wasn't convenient to do a, a slate at the beginning. But right here, I've got my markers. I'm just going to do it by markers. This will make it really Really easy and what's going to do is it'll move all the clips to a process clips bin it'll put it into a folder for you it'll generate the video that we're going to put into the timeline that has all clips lined up I'm going to hit OK and there we go so the process clips are now in this folder nice and organized and I've got the multi-camera track right there so I can actually added the movie file 
one of the clips here. I'm going to get rid of that and just name it Multicam Take 4. I'm going to grab this and drag and drop it into my timeline. And I brought the video in here. And all these clips are embedded in this one file now. We're going to show that here in a minute. But right now what I want to do is I also want to get the music timed up to this as well. I've got that recorded instead of using the in-camera audio, which sounds horrible because they're in-camera audio. Listen to this. Really crappy audio there. So I'm going to grab this file right here and I'm going to hear the slate and get the exact same moment as well. Go ahead and mark it. Holding my heart, take four. And there's my slate marker. Get that on the exact same moment there. I'm going to put an endpoint on that. I'm going to go into my timeline and get the exact same point where that slate comes down and sync the audio up with the video. Get it right on the frame right there and drop my audio. Grab my audio and drop it down in the timeline. Lock that right up at the exact same point right there. I'm going to do shift plus increase my track size. And now let's play through a little bit of this. In my heart, and it's shaped like you. A nearly color blind all us. Now we can start editing. So I've got the music in there. I've got the angles put in there. And now we're going to start multicamming. So the next step is to go down to the wrench here. We're going to change the view right here. Right now it's just viewing the, the, the clip that's taking over in the multi-camera file down here. I'm going to hit the wrench and we're going to go down to multi-camera and change this view to a multi-camera view. Now you'll notice it's got, and I'm going to grab this and move it over a little bit so I've got more room to play with here. Notice we've got the final program monitor. It has what's called the active clip right here. And then it's got all the other takes. If we press play, you'll notice. Is He's all playing so these all play in sync now. And we've got all those clips that have been matched by markers playing all together in sync with the audio there. So now we can start cutting. I'm going to go to the beginning. And I'm going to decide which camera angle that I want to start off on. Now notice one thing that you can do is when you are not playing and you're paused, you can change the camera angle of wh where the playhead is existing over what clip it's over. It'll change that by, look right here, this is the active camera angle right now, this yellow outline. And I can tell it I want to start, let's see if there is a, notice this music starts with, a, with a, the guitar at the beginning. Let's go through, I'm going to forward through this to where the music starts. Okay, and right here the music starts. And I kind of like this shot starting up on the close on the close up of the guitar because that's the first thing that happens. And then I might so I'm going to click on that. This whole angle here just changed to the guitar. Now when the guitar strums, I might want to change to the wide shot or to a medium shot. So now what we can do if you're on pause and you click, it, it'll change whatever clip you've cut out. The playhead is over, positioned over. It will change that to that angle. So but then when when we are playing, you're going to start clicking on these. It'll be like a live camera cut, and you're going to cut to whatever camera you want to. So let's play. I'm going to pre-roll just a little bit and after she strums the guitar I'm going to cut to the wide shot come back to the guitar cut to a wider shot of the guitar back to the wide shot and then when she starts to sing no stays to close up hard to get out here where it pans so you can kind of anticipate these things then when you stop again notice what it's done down here it has performed all those cuts so now if we move back here and we play through this, you'll notice she starts playing the guitar. And it cuts. All those cuts are exactly where I wanted them to be. Now, if you want to change an angle, all you have to do is pause over that specific angle. Go up here and it shows you the angle that is active right there. And if you want to change that, all you have to do is simply click on another shot. If you want to change to this one, you click and it just changed that entire clip to this angle. I kind of like the angle that I had. But the rest is pretty easy. Every time you play and pause, if I undo between after I do a play and pause and I do a bunch of cuts, watch this. I'm just going to do a bunch of random cuts here. Click, click, click. Click, click, click. I pause. All those cuts right there. Between that play and pause, if I do control Z, it memorizes that as if it's one move and it will undo all those. If you want to do some changes to your timeline, now this becomes basically a normal editor here. You can go back, and like I said, you can either change the angle that you're playing over by clicking up here. It'll change to that specific angle for that clip that the playhead is over. Or you can simply do some trimming down here. Say there's a shot in here we didn't like, like this shot. I can just highlight that shot, delete, and trim that over. Or I can grab my roll edit tool and trim it back over there somewhere in the middle. And it becomes kind of a normal editor after you've done that. So fairly simple.
That is essentially multicamming in Premiere. It's, it's pretty easy. Uh, if you go up to edit, there's one other thing that you can do under, under keyboard shortcuts. If you look up, you can see that you have certain shortcuts specifically to cut to several different cam, uh, camera angles. You can have, these cameras are numbered as you dropped in the clips here from one, two, three, four, five. Up here, we've got one, two, three, four, five. So I can use the shortcuts control one, two, three, four, five to cut to those camera angles as we play. So you can use that as a shortcut instead. So I, so I press play. And stop. So if you want to use the keyboard shortcuts, that makes it pretty easy just by holding down controlling, doing one, two, three, four, and there are the cuts that I I got a hole in so once you're done with this edit, the last kind of step that you might want to do here, not necessary, but it will actually speed up color correction because right now each one of these clips is referencing all the original five clips. You can right click on this and once this is done, it's done. You can't undo it, but if you've closed the project and opened it back up, it won't let you put it back into a multicam sequence. Once you're sure you're done, you can go into multi camera and flatten these files. Once they're flattened, that's done. I can do I can do undo at this point, but if I close the project, open it back up, that option is going to be gone to bring it back to multicam. But you'll notice it's turned from that green color to this blue color. These are individual standalone clips now. And now I can go through and do color correction on these individual clips and fix each one of these individual clips. I still can trim if I wish, but the multi-camera part is pretty much done here once you flatten it. And the reason why you flatten it is because it's no longer referencing five different video clips and it will be quicker and the effects will perform quicker on these individual ones as opposed to processing all that information with, instead of processing information on five clips at a time. So the last thing I want to do is once my edit is finished, I'm going to want to reattach these to the original high quality files. So I'm going to highlight all of my timeline here. This is how you do it. And this helps if the, if the file extension is the exact same. If it's not, you kind of have to go through and reattach them one, one at a time. It's kind of a pain in the butt. So I'm going to right click on this and we're going to make all these files offline. We're going to, the media file is going to remain on the disk. We don't want to delete them. I'm going to hit OK. And now it has our edit decision there, but there is no longer images attached to it. And once those are all offline, you're going to be seeing this little symbol here that shows that all your cameras are now detached. The edit's still there, but we have to reattach them to some cameras. Now, this is kind of dumb in Premiere. I wish they would change this and let you switch original folders right now. I, you actually have to kind of trick this, but you have to delete the folder that has all the compressed footage in. I'm going to delete the compressed. You can bring it back if you want to. I'm not going to empty my trash right now. I'm just going to delete it. It's in the trash, and it work, this works on a Mac as well. And now there's no way that Premiere can find that folder. Otherwise, if you attach one file, it'll it'll just go revert right back to the original folder. One file will be connected to the new file to the original file, and the other ones will go back to the compressed footage. It's really stupid. So I'm going to highlight all these, right click, and we're going to say Link Media. And now we're going to have this navigate here. We're going to hit Locate, and we're going to have it go to the original folder here. So I go inside the original folder, looking for Camera One. I'm going to find Camera One, hit OK, and it will reattach everything else. If it doesn't for some reason, you'll have to go through and tell it to match individual files. They're now attached to the original high quality footage and we can finish our color correction or start color correction from here. So that's pretty much the process of multicamming. Like I said, it really helps a lot if you've got a lot of angles to encode the footage to less quality, decrease the data rate on those files so the computer can handle playing all those streams back at once. And then when you're finished, you delete the files. If you want to bring those back, by the way, now that I've got these reattached, I save my project and just go to the recycle bin, grab my folder that I've put there and drop it back onto my hard drive and it's restored. And now Premiere, ha we tricked Premiere into connecting to the real high quality files and now the project is finished. Most days it's hard to get out of Took more than just your things. You left me here with empty dreams. I got a hole in my heart, and it's shaped like you. I'm nearly colorblind. All I see is blue.
it shake. 